Hi class, so this is your first video on skeletal muscles, so make sure you have worksheet number one out and your master list. So we're going to be starting with muscle, muscles of facial expression. Now these are all superficial muscles that are moving the skin of the face. These muscles aren't like any other muscles that really that you're going to be learning these muscles insert into the skin. They're not inserting into a tendon, into a bone. They're inserting into the skin. I also wanted to bring this up here so when we get to the, the nervous system, you'll kind of have this in the background that you heard it before. All these muscles of facial expression are innervated by cranial nerve number seven the facial nerve. We will learn that in the nervous system. But for now, have it in the back of your mind. The muscles of facial expression, they're all innervated by the facial nerve. So let's get started. The first muscle is going to be the frontalis. Where is it? It's over the frontal bone. There is a, a right frontalis and a left frontalis muscle. Their origin is in the aponeurosis over the skull here. Now remember we said aponeurosis is a special type of tendon. It's a flat flat tendon. So this is aponeurosis. Its insertion is the skin overlying the frontal bone. Its action is going to be elevation of the eyebrows. You're going to be able to wrinkle your forehead. I just put this in here because I love this. This is so cute. So here we have our frontalis, our right and left. Um, it. I just wanted to, sh to, to bring this up so that you know that there is a right and left and they blend into each other right in the, the midline of the head right here. So let's see them in action. So we know they elevate the eyebrows. Um, they wrinkle the forehead. They are associated with expressions of surprise, shock, and horror, and of recognition. You just go, hey, Hey there, girl. I, I recognize you. These are, this muscle is a major place where people that are getting Botox will be getting Botox. I think I mentioned to you Botox is botulism toxin. It is a toxin. It can kill you in large doses, but if you just inject it into these muscle fibers, it will just be a toxin to these muscle fibers and it won't allow the nervous system to contract um, these muscle fibers. Next muscle, orbicularis oculi. Here's another muscle that's telling you a lot of information. Remember I said if it's orbicularis, that's kind of like an orbit around something. Oculi tells us it's an orbit around ocular, the eye. So this is the orbicularis oculi. It's like making a ring. The muscle fibers are in a ring-like fashion around the eye. The action is going to be closing or squinting the eyes. And basically any ringed type muscle fiber arrangement is going to act as a circular sphincter muscle. And we'll be getting to other sphincter muscles down the road. Obicularis oculi, it closes the eye and it squints the eye. Give a big wink, you are using your obicularis oculi. The next one, obicularis oris. Another orbit, but this time it's going around the oral region, the mouth. So here is obicularis 
orris on your classroom model, a ring-like muscle fibers around the, the mouth there. It's action. It puckers up the lips. We call this the kissing muscle. So here is showing you the obicularis oris in action. The kissing muscle. Now we're going to go on to zygomaticus minor and zygomaticus major. The origin is going to be on the zygomatic bone. Hmm, that's why it's called zygomaticus. Origin is in the zygomatic bone. Here's the zygomatic bone up here. The insertion for the minor is going to be this upper lip right here. This is the minor, zygomaticus minor. This is zygomaticus major. It is at the angle of the mouth. So we say I is pulled towards the origin. So this is going to pull this lip area up and you will smile. That is your smiley muscle. So here is zygomaticus minor and major. Oops, in action. It doesn't matter if you're little or you're old. It is just still so beautiful to see that zygomaticus minor and major in action. Now, this muscle, depressor anguli oris. Remember I said always see if a muscle will give you hints, if its name will give you hints. Depressor, hmm, that's an action. It's going to pull down. What's it pulling down? Anguli oris. Oris means mouth. It's, it's depressing down the angle of the mouth. Its origin is in the, the body. Let me show it to you. The origin is the body of the mandible here. This is the muscle right here. And its insertion is at the inferior border of the obicularis oris. So here's its insertion. Here's its origin. I pull to O. It's going to pull down the angle of the mouth. And the action that you will get is pulling down the angle of the mouth here and here. So the presser anguli oris, facial expression of sadness and uncertainty. This looks like uncertainty or sadness. This is pure sadness, yes. Depressor anguli oris. Now our last muscle on the list, platysma. This is a very very superficial, thin, thin muscle. Its origin is on um, the subcutaneous fascia of um, the, the upper chest. Basically, it's in the skin, the subq of the skin. And its insertion is going to be in the subcutaneous fascia of the jaw, skin, and mandible up in here. Very superficial muscle. On a cadaver, it usually is just pulled apart. It's so easy to mess up. So this is from the cadaver. So you can see how thin and superficial this muscle is. Here it is on this drawing. Now, basically, this is, has no real function. The way I was taught about this muscle, it's basically a drape. It's a little curtain that is draping the front of the neck to kind of smooth things out because there's lots of stuff that is behind this curtain and we want to just kind of make it all pretty up front. But what happens when we get older, this pretty up front is sagging and there's this gap in between the right and left 
left platysma, and you get turkey neck, gobble neck right here. So that's sad. This is what it does. It tenses up the neck, this area, this neck in the chest. So if you are kind of, if you're a guy and you're tensing up underneath your chin to give a shave, that is the platysma. So if you do this, you will feel it tensing up on your upper chest here too. So this is relaxed and this is tensed up. That is the platysma there. And sure enough, this is one of those plastic surgery things they're going to be doing. They're going to sew up this gap between the right and left platysma to kind of close that curtain there because there's some not such appealing stuff coming through here when we get older. So that's platysma um, plastic surgery. Look it up if you're interested. So I just want to go through all these muscles one more time for a recap. This is your classroom model. This is the frontalis, frontalis, obicularis, what, oculi, you can see them both here, zygomaticus, minor and major, obicularis, oris, there is no platysma on this model. Here is another one. I just wanted to bring this up because it, it's color-coded. Frontalis, this purple, obicularis oculi, zygomaticus minor, the pink, zygomaticus major, the blue. Um, they're not showing you obicularis oris. This is depressor anguli oris. Oh, I think I missed him on here. Here is depressor anguli oris right here. Missed that one right there. I just wanted to bring this picture in to show you what Bell's palsy looks like. You've already probably have heard of Bell's palsy. That just is when the facial nerve that is going to those muscles of facial expression is not working for some reason. This patient was asked to close his eyes and smile. Usually only one side of the face is going to be affected, one of the facial nerves. This side of the face is functioning properly. He's able to close his eyes and smile. This one is not. He's not able to contract the muscles of the obicularis oculi. He cannot close his eyes. The zygomaticus, zygomaticus minor and major are not working. Um, this is the affected side right here. I just wanted to bring that in. So that's it for this video, and it's on to the next one.